Hello, everybody, and welcome to what probably is our most interesting and most profound week of shift tracking since we've started this series at the beginning of the year. So what I did here in our spreadsheet was I just compiled some of our January and February data into averages. We were just running a little too long horizontally. So in order to keep this all sort of in one visual snapshot, we did it this way. Now, we are going to be doing some of our statistics in reverse order today. Um, and that's because we have a single data point on here that for the first time all year has reversed its course and has reversed its course along the lines of what many people are talking about on the national media outlets as far as home prices. Now, when you start to listen to these national news media outlets, one of the things that they do, and it's no fault of their own, but they're aggregating national data. Okay, they're putting together and they're summarizing national data. And that takes the mountains, the beach towns, the resort towns, the vacation towns, the suburbs, the cities. They're taking all of that and they're just kind of jamming it all together and then trying to make some assertion that, hey, this is, you know, what it is. And there's nothing wrong with that to do a, need, a media show when you need to sell ad space and when you need to get viewers. But uh, I have no sponsors. I have no media outlets to support. So for me... The only reason I like to actually take a look at this data and do it in the hyper local fashion that we're doing is because I'm actively selling and I need my buyers and I need my sellers to understand in real time what's going on in what's probably one of the most confusing and challenging real estate markets we've had in 10 years. Okay, so let's jump into what we're looking at today. And again, I told you we're going to start from the bottom up and you can see that we have for the first time since the beginning of the year. We now have a median list price, the price of you know your, your median home that's sold, average home that's sold, went up. The prices have gone up. And they have not gone up due to some artificial lending practice or anything like that back in the oh, wait. This is just good old fashioned market economics. The supply is low and the demand is fairly steady. Therefore, prices increase. This is 101 econ, okay? Now, as we look at this, 319. Now, our average is in January about 312. February, they even dipped a little bit, 311. And that was kind of that slowing of the market. But then once our spring market's picking up, we're now at 319.9. So from the week prior at 315, we've had a $4,900 increase in the median list price. That is not insignificant. That is, that is significant, I should say. We don't need a double negative here. That is significant, right? So many of my buyers had said, I'll wait till the prices come down. I'll wait till things start to cool off a little bit. And then I'll start to you know, actually jump in the market. Well, my problem is the interest rates never came down right? They're still up in the high sixes, low sevens. I mean, we, the Fed just spoke this week. I'll get an update from my lender about, you know, what the specifics of that were, but they're still up there. We saw prices go up even without them coming down, without the interest rates coming down. So here's my concern. If you're a buyer right now and you are still considering purchasing, but you're waiting for prices to come down, A, I just don't see that self, it's bearing itself out in the market just from the data, okay? Two, when you do go to finally buy, let's say maybe 18 months from now, maybe the interest rates have come down from 7.1 for a conventional loan down to maybe like a 5.8 or something like that, or a 5.3 for a conventional loan, which would be a great drop. I, I'd refinance my mortgage if they came down that much, right? But if that happens, what at the same time is happening to the price? Now, interest rate generally means more than price, but there's limits to that, right? Our interest rates aren't going to come down all that much, right? We're not going to see them in the threes again. We're just not. So if you're waiting for that, just stop. You're, they're not happening, okay? You need to reorient your budget personally to understand that housing is going to be a little bit more of your monthly income's cost than it was before. You just need to understand that. You can't just keep hoping for it to come down lower than it was, okay? But that price increase is going to jump significantly. A lot of people are sitting on a lot of equity in their homes if they did have them, you know, for the past period of time. And yeah, they're going to bite the bullet on that interest rate at some point, but they're going to be able to offer over what they probably need to, right? They're going to offer more than they should. And again, this, this conversation about offering more than they should, it's not just price. It's the inspection contingencies that you're going to waive and the ability for you to negotiate those inspection repairs. That's going to be a cost. Your appraisal gap coverage, right? Most of these offers are going over asking price, at least the good agents are pricing, you know, at market and then allowing the bidding war for people to purchase emotionally and for that price to rise up. You're going to be covering money in appraisal gap coverages, which increases the total cost of the transaction. And then you're going to have to throw in your miscellaneous. Like um, in New Jersey here, we do New Jersey realty seller transfer fees is traditionally paid by the seller. I encourage a lot of my buyers, especially when we're at the top of our 
or pre-approval when we're right at the top of all of our other terms to add that in as a swing from the debits to the credits from the seller side of the buyer side of the closing cost, which helps them again increase the profit for the seller, but it increases the total cost of the transaction for the buyer. So again, you may wait for interest rates to come down slightly. The problem is all the other costs of the transaction, in my opinion, are going to increase substantially as we get that into that point and it becomes a little bit more competitive because the interest rates are coming back down. So that's the, that's the little concern here. So just real quick, going into our couple data points, so we know that median uh, list price is at the highest that it's been. Okay, The other two categories at the highest they've been, new listings, uh, excuse me, pending, the ones that went under contract, no surprise. That's the highest that it's been. We're here into the spring market and the closed column is the highest that it's ever been at 327. So we had 349 that went um, pending or went under contract. We had 327 that were closed. And again, we're hoping to see, okay, if those are the pendings and closed numbers, we'd love to see that the new listings that came on market this week were higher than that, right? To help replenish some of this inventory. Was it? No, of course it wasn't. It was low. It wasn't the lowest that it's been, but it was fairly low. It was only at 263 for the new active listings. So again, 263 new new listings and then a 349 one under contract. That's a huge gap that's still eating away at that total available uh, active listings. And that's what we see in the total active listings column. And that's what we see in the volume column. Our total active listings are at 1180. January's average was 1501. February's average was 1359. This past week was 1180. Okay, so that is by far, by far the lowest that it has been since we've started tracking this at the beginning of the year. And obviously volume, which is a corollary, very linear uh, equation, basically with the total active listings, that's at its lowest that it's been too. And the final one, which is a little bit of an odd one, but makes kind of sense, price reductions are at an all time low because sellers don't need to reduce. Things are going very quickly and they're going for top dollar. They have no need to price reduce. So. What are we starting to see a little bit going forward here? Probably more of the same. Probably more of the same. Now, I'm very interested to hear what the Fed does this week with some of their rates and what they're meeting with and things like that. So let's keep an eye out on that. It could be an up, it could be a down, it could be a kind of a net neutral if they don't really change them all that much. But what I am starting to see on the streets, if you were, uh, when we're offering and when we're, we're putting these listings on is it is a feeding frenzy. It's very fast. It's very quick on market. Get get your offers in. Go out and see the property ASAP. I mean that that is a necessity. And then for the sellers, I'm bracing them. I'm saying be ready. You know, we try and list our properties maybe Wednesday, Thursday of the week. We try and make that first weekend really kind of the bonanza. And I I told a seller we just went over and took some listing photos yesterday. I told him, you know, be ready. You th this first kind of week, these first three to five days, it's going to be a lot. Um, and luckily he doesn't, he's, they're not staying in the house currently. So it's going to be basically a vacant go and show. And that's great because if it wasn't, they'd be getting kicked out of the house every half hour for the first couple of days, just because the volume of showings are going to be there. So anyway, that's going to be it for us this week. Next week is going to be the end of the quarter, which is going to be an interesting. So we get to do sort of a first 25% uh, of the year uh, wrap up to take a look at everything. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. Uh, if you ever have any questions on any of the stuff that we're talking about, obviously you know where to find me. And I will see you next week.